O.J. Simpson made, was made famous because the eye formation cut play, you get good blocking angles, you pull the guard, the linebacker thinks it's a pass, they drop back, and you have good running room. McGriff, the pulling guard, is going to block McGinnis, number 41, right here, pulling around, blocking number 68, All-American. They have two All-Americans in this ball game. Bruce Kimball, also from Massachusetts, is All-American. And Solomon gets only a yard on that first and ten situation, just inside the 40. It's interesting to note that McFadden has 176 yards and Solomon has 181. So between them, they have 357 yards. That is amazing. 430 yards rushing for A&M and the Minutemen 107. What a turnaround from what we expected at the top of the show. And a close ball game, 29 to 22, and an issue still in doubt. 450 to go, second and nine on the 39-yard line. A&M, McFadden managed to shrug away from one man, but is buckled by Joe McLaughlin. And it will be a third down situation at about the 38-yard line. Now, I'll say this, the one thing that the Minutemen want to do here is to keep A&M away from field goal range. Now they still are within striking distance, Frank, 29 to 22, but three more points would make it extremely difficult. A&M has not completed a pass in this ball game. All rushing yardage, zero passing. Third and eight. Here is Chester. He finds an opening on the left side. He's going to get a first down out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Quick reaction by Albert Chester. On the replay, Chester drops back to pass. It's a pattern where they're running two receivers against three defenders. There's nobody open. And actually, they had a safety blitz zone. And so when Chester decided to scramble out the backside, no one's at home. First down. First and 10, the ball is on the 27 and a half yard line. Three minutes, 59 seconds to go in the ball game. The Rattlers of A&M of Florida, out in front by seven. They have the ball. There's a big hole by Solomon, and Solomon gets quickly through for eight to the 20. Bob Manning making the stop. Would you say Manning, the safety man, has figured in a lot of plays? They have had gaping holes with those wide splits. Pop the play right through the line of scrimmage, and the only man between the ball carrier and six points is the safety man, Bob Manning. Three and a half minutes to play. Ball on the 20-yard line. McFadden with 177 yards today, and Solomon with 188. It's been a dynamic one-two punch. Chester hands it off to Solomon. He's got some daylight. Touchdown! I don't know whether he's lying there, just being grateful to be in the end zone. <laughs> the only Thomas thing that probably could have happened, he must have fallen right on the football, and uh, it must have forced the air out of him, and he a little bit... Uh... Let's watch the replay. It's an off-tackle play, and poor Bob Manning, the safety man, it's just a little bit of a mismatch right here. First, McLaughlin misses him, then uh, he cuts back in behind Manning, and finally... Uh, Jesse comes over to try to get in the play, but it's too late. And Solomon trots off the field. He now has 208 yards and three touchdowns today. And an eye formation fullback back unheard of. That's unheard of. Vince Coleman to try for the extra point. He puts it up. And there's a marker down. It looks like roughing the kicker. The ball had gone wide. Bill, unfortunately, they, I believe they piled on Albert Chester, the quarterback, and he's holding his knee. I hope that he's not seriously injured. The score 35 to 22, and the marker went down, which means, and I did not see a signal, Frank. Did you, whether the kick was good? I didn't think it was. It was not good. McGriff, the All-American offensive guard, is pulling on this particular play around and watch him block right on McGinnis, number 41. Delay him just long enough for Solomon, the ball carrier, to get away from him. Yeah. 
One of the things that we were always reluctant to do to have our quarterback, our top quarterback, hold for extra points and field goals for that reason. McGinnis came in on a blitz, on a blitz right up the middle. He didn't intentionally uh, rough the holder, but watch number 41, the left of your screen, has a little opening. He dives to try to block it, but he falls right on the leg. You see his right leg is sitting up a little bit, and his cleats are locked in the turf. Very dangerous. So Albert Chester is being helped off the field. He's had a brilliant day today. He has led his team to a 35-22 lead. And make no mistake about it, even though he has not completed a pass today, I think his ball handling in the backfield and the running of the ball club cannot uh, be overlooked too, uh, too much. That's exactly right, uh, Bill. But uh, Chester did a magnificent job of handling the option play and also of audible and that, uh, changing the play at the line of scrimmage when the defense overshifted. And that's one of the big things that's happened successfully for him in this last half. He has a very capable replacement, Robert James. And timeout here is being called by Coach Rudy Hubbard to talk it over. It looks like they're going to go for two. We'll return to Memorial Stadium here in Wichita Falls, Texas for more of the Pioneer Bowl right after this. John Brennan for Capital Dodge, now with the largest supply of four-wheel drives in Florida. Many models to choose from, only at... Florida A&M will go for two now with Robert James as the quarterback. Three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the ballgame. James back to pass. Throws one, end zone, incomplete. Knocked away at the last second from the intended receiver. Bob Manning was the man who stopped it, and so the score remains 35 to 22, and anything is possible. In the Independence Bowl today, East Carolina at halftime leading Louisiana Tech. And in the first Garden State Bowl, Arizona State defeats Rutgers 34 to 18. And don't forget, over most of these ABC stations, ABC's Wide World of Sports, it'll be the Southern 500. And I think you'll enjoy all of that action together with be the there, World High deal? Diving Championship, the World Show Jumping Championship. That'll be at 5 o'clock Eastern and Pacific Time, 4 o'clock Central on most of these ABC stations. Excuse me, Bill, aren't you going to be at the Southern 500? We always enjoy doing that one from Darlington, South Carolina. Vince Coleman will kick off. The band members of Florida A&M having reason to blow their horns today, 35-22. Bill, I can't remember ever having two backs rush for 200 yards in the same game. And we're reaching that possibility as Solomon's gone 208 and McFadden has 177. It would be a first as far as I can ever remember. Yes, and I think that's an important thing to remember too, Frank, that it uh, was against an outstanding defensive team from Massachusetts. The, the Massachusetts defensive coaches just felt that the scheme was just perfect for them. They were playing for a lot of passes and they moved over and they've been hurt with the runs up the middle and back to the weak side. I'm just wondering, uh, Frank, if we can get into that wide split in the line. It seems to me that that was the befuddling thing as they'll have to kick over here with the kick going out of bounds. Believe me, it's befuddling. The defensive coaches have stayed up late at night trying to figure out when do we move inside? How wide is, does the split have to be before our lineman goes in and takes it? You have to go in and try to make something happen. Well, our defensive coach, Jimmy Johnson, who's just taken the head job at uh, Oklahoma State, he wouldn't let you split over a yard. You move over the yard and he'd make his tackles move in or he'd make the nose guard move over that side and try to penetrate and the splits gradually shrink. When you do that, they gradually... McEvely. Down the middle, he's got his man and can't hold it. Falling to the ground. Looked like Marty Paglione. And Bob Pickett, congratulations, Bob, on a fine first year as head coach at UMass. Boy, there's disappointment all over his face to bring his team this far, just within grasp of the national championship, but he has nothing to be ashamed of. His team has played outstanding football all year and in this ball game also. And now, with a second and 10 and only 32 seconds to go, McEvely, who is six out of 18, fires a wobbly pass out of bounds, incomplete. That's all there is to go. And you get a pretty good look, I think, 
at Rudy Hubbard on the sidelines. What a happy guy he must be right now. There he is. His team was voted the national champion last year when there was not a playoff. It wasn't this division, as a matter of fact. He was voted national champion. Bill, I was telling him before the ball game, he was had a chance to accomplish something that probably never be accomplished again. He won the national championship the last time by vote and the first time by playoff. So with this victory today, it'll be 24 out of 25. 24 wins in the last 25 games. Paglione has a first down with 21 seconds to go. Well, the thing, of course, that puts it out of reach was that last touchdown by Solomon. It made a 13-point difference. You can see McEvely going to the tight end down the middle. The safety man, of course, is way deep. He's not going to let him get behind. And Paglione is wide open. McEvely is right on target. Another first down. Clock running. And McEvely throws it. It is incomplete. And with 10 seconds to go now, it looks like we're down to the final play of the ball game. Bill, the final stats for Solomon was 27 attempts, 208 yards. McFaith, 22 attempts, 179. Ten seconds to go. 35-22, Massachusetts trailing, trying just to get one more. And it is incomplete. Well, I guess they're going to get one more play. Well, this is Bill Fleming along with Frank Broyles and Dave Diles. Thanking you very much for being with us on this national championship playoff game today in 1AA. We've enjoyed returning to the Pioneer Bowl of Wichita Falls, Texas. And I can say, Frank and Dave, we've been treated not only royally, to, but to a great football game. A great, Bill. It's been a wonderful experience. Hopefully someday we can do it in Division One. With five seconds to go, at McEvely unloads it down the sidelines. It is caught. Touchdown. Final play of the ball game. Chris Kurtz was wrestling with the football with Louis Wilkerson, and coming down with it was Chris Kurtz. 34 yards, and it's a TD. 35 to 28. Time has run out, but Here's they're the going to give him a chance to go for two. Bill, it's an unbelievable catch by Kurtz. Wilkerson is right there. He thinks he's going to intercept it. He's waiting. He jumps up. He has it, but Kurtz comes down with the ball. So as I mentioned, even though the clock has run out, they are obligated to give them the two point, or the one point if they want to do, but they're going to go for two. The try for conversion. McEvely can't do it. He has stopped, and that will be the final score of the afternoon, and Florida A&M's Rattlers have won the national championship 35-28, to 28. and Rudy Hubbard is given the ride that he has hoped for the most. Now, be sure to stay tuned for ABC's Wide World of Sports at 5 o'clock Eastern Pacific, 4 o'clock Central. Today's show featuring the Southern 500 Stock Car Race, the World High Diving Championship, the World Show Jumping Championship, and a report on Mario Andretti receiving the World Driving Championship. Once again, the final score, Florida A&M 35, Massachusetts 28. Bill Fleming, Frank Rawls, and Dave Dial saying so long travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United built the largest airline in the free world around you. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.